In this video I will explain how to build a perfect ball differential for your X12. Building the ball diff for the X12 is fairly simple, but you need to pay attention to certain details while building to make sure that you have a really good performance from the diff. And I'm gonna guide you through the process right now. First of all, I want to point out that I'm using the optional ceramic diff balls from X-Ray, as well as the optional ceramic truss bearing. Both these parts uh, really help to improve the performance of the diff, to make it have less slip, uh, better durability, and better performance for all conditions. So if you have intentions of racing at the highest level, I really recommend um, purchasing these optional parts for the diff. But let's put those aside for now and start with the first step, which is sanding the diff rings. So I start off with cleaning the diff rings with brake cleaner, just like that. Done, they're clean. And then I'm going to use a 1000 grit uh, sandpaper, which is a pretty fine sandpaper that I will use to polish the, not polish, but to sand the difference. So I spray a bit of brake cleaner on a piece of sandpaper and I use this tool from a company in Italy. It's specifically made for for sanding the diff rings and it has a magnet so you can just fit it on there. But you can also use the uh, part of the diff which you attach the diff ring to. But if you don't want to do damage to that part you can use a part like this. It's pretty easy to make or to buy this kind of part. If you look around they're available online as aftermarket tools. So you should use a 600, 800 or 1000 grit sandpaper. Pretty much that's the range that you're looking for. So once that's done you can see that it has a bit of a rough finish um, to be able to grab onto the diff balls better. So we need to do that for both diff rings. Spray some more brake cleaner on there. When you've done this a few times obviously the diff rings will get thinner so I recommend replacing the diff rings after a few rebuilds to maintain the correct thickness and not give away any performance. And let's move on to the next step. I then grab a flat screwdriver and I grab my hoodie uh, super diff grease which is a, a really good diff grease from Hoodie that you can you can purchase and you apply it to the to the part where we're gonna stick the diff ring. This little grease here which I'm putting on right now it will just serve to keep the diff ring in place. I just stick it on there. And then we can already put the bearing on here actually. This is the kit bearing that comes with, um, with the car, with the diff. And then I, I apply a liberal amount of diff grease to the ring. Uh, you should apply a decent amount, not, not too much, but enough for it to be able to to grease between the balls and the diff rings properly. If you don't put enough, you might have a really free uh, working diff for a short time, but it will not last you very long. So I prefer to use a bit more, at least for modified racing, and to break in the diff properly, and that way I can run a few runs with the same diff performance. 
So once that's done, you can see how much I apply here by a closer look. The next step is then to insert the um, ceramic diff balls into the spur here. It's easier to do this if you have a parts tray. Uh, for example, this one from Hootie serves this purpose very well. And you can grab these with your fingers and just push them into place in the spur gear. Uh, it might be easier to do with a with a pair of tweezers if you have a trouble uh, grabbing the balls from the tray and inserting them in the spur gear. But you need to find a way which works better for you. I prefer to do it this way because it's a bit faster. I just need to be careful not to drop them. Once that's done, we can slide the spur gear in place, push it on there, and we can just spread the diff crease evenly onto the balls like that. That will help to, to speed up the breaking process, which I will explain how to do later on. And then we just we need to repeat the process for the other side of the diff. So again, we need to add diff grease here. Once that's done, we need to install the bearing into it. Uh, make sure you don't use too much bearing oil on the bearings that go into the diff, because you don't want bearing oil leaking onto the, the diff rings or the diff balls. So use a very thin, but uh, not too much bearing oil on the, on the bearings. These actually come pre-oiled from the factory, so you don't need to add any oil to them, but I recommend adding just a little bit for, uh, for better durability. And that's on there, can you spin it around a little bit to work the grease in place. And then it's time for the thrust bearing. The truss bearing is, as I explained earlier, the ceramic one from X-Ray, which improves the performance of the diff. And here it's important to pay attention to the, the diameter of these two washers, because they're different. You have a bigger one, which is 7.95, and the smaller one, which is 7.75. The bigger washer go towards the, the inside of the diff. So first we gotta attach the bearing here. And then this little aluminum piece that holds the truss bearing in place. And then the bigger diameter washer goes there. When that's done, we're gonna apply a hoodie uh, graphite grease onto the truss bearing itself. I like this grease because it's sticky, it stays in place and uh, makes the truss bearing work really well for a longer duration of time. So I always use this black hoodie graphite grease on the truss bearing. So that's done there, just stick it on there. And then the smaller diameter uh, washer. And then we're gonna install the, uh, the conical black washers. And these washers have a flat spot. So you gotta put the flat spot towards the diff and then towards the outside. So that way the, the nut has a flat spot to, to tighten onto. All makes sense when you're, you're tightening in it and you, you'll see what I mean. And don't tighten the diff too much now because we're gonna break it in. So just tighten it enough for it to hold itself together and that you can still spin the spur with your thumb when it's when it's together and it's ready for the next step, which is the break-in process, which we'll do in the car. So when we have the diff mounted in the car, as you can see, it's not tight, you can spin it with your hand very freely. I try to use just a little bit of throttle while holding one side of the bit and alternating between the two sides for 
around 20 to 30 seconds. This will help the dip to break in for the balls to form a groove onto the dip rings for them to seat better onto the dip rings when you tighten it. So once that's done, we now gradually just start to tighten the diff. You should tighten it to the point where you cannot spin the left wheel while holding the right wheel and the spur gear. Or you can hold both wheels and try to spin the spur with your thumb and it should be very difficult to do. As you can see now, the diff is spinning freely, but I can barely spin the left wheel while holding these two. And this means that it's hard enough, it's tight enough that it's not going to slip under any circumstance. And you'll have a, a free moving diff that's going to last you at least a few rounds with perfect performance. So the braking process is very, very important.